Good morning, it's me, Margaret. It's great to see you all. Oh my God, that's such a cool heavy match. I almost got those sweatpants. Okay, I can't see you. Not through the TV. It's fine, it's fine. Um, so I've been reading your responses to the um, forum post so far. I wanted to make sure that y'all were real clear about, um, first of all, how do you get to these readings? So far, your readings have either come from the file section of Canvas or from the book Who's Your Source, which is the book that I told you to buy immediately. If you haven't gotten your hands on Who's Your Source yet, get this book. If you did the post without looking at Who's Your Source that requires Who's Your Source, I see you. It's okay. You can find out about ethos, logos, and pathos without Who's Your Source, but I need you to get that book because that book is going to be incredibly helpful as you learn how to deal with other sources in your writing and also just learn about what it means to be a responsible academic writer. So get that book, Who's Your Source? <clears throat> the other thing I had to say about the, the forums, uh, the discussion forums, was that um, I really uh, have had in the past some confusion about the grading scale that I use, and so I'm going to put that out there right now. Uh, I believe I did this in my email too. Um, so. If you engage with the material, think about it, respond to the prompt, and have an original take on the reading that's not just a summary, that's, not, um, that's, answering, that's asking and answering questions that come from your experience reading the piece, often it takes a couple of readings to come up with a, a really thoughtful, personal take that's more than a summary, um, then that's a nine, which is you know, uh, on a 10 point scale, that's 90%. So that's an A minus. So you've done a solid job. Um, if you go above and beyond that, either um, in the, the way that you've crafted your response or um, the, the extent to which you've incorporated things that you've seen other people doing on the posts in the, in the discussion forum, I'd love to see interaction between students in the discussion forum. Um, anything that, that, that is exceptional will get you a 10, which is great. Congratulations, 100%. Basically impossible to do anything 100% right, except for making a left turn, which if you don't get it 100% right, then you basically get it 100% wrong. So if you're confused, if you're like, oh, I got a nine, I thought I did really well. If you got a nine, you did really well. If you got less than a nine, Either you haven't really engaged with the writing in a way that lets me know that it is your response to the work. So for example, um, there were some posts that seemed that they might have been based on other people's posts, in fact, using the same language as other people's posts. And I know that it's helpful to read other students' work, and that's why you don't have to post before you have access to the forum. I want you to read each other's work. If you don't know how to respond to something, you will get ideas from reading each other's work. If I see it structured after someone else's work or basically addressing all of the same things, then I don't feel like it's your response and so I can't give it, I can't give it a, great, a great grade because part of the writing is thinking and the thinking that you do belongs to you. I want to see the thinking that you do. I will reward the thinking that you do. And of course, you can always text me or um, Call me or email me if you have any questions about that. So this week seems like a week where we're not doing a whole lot. <sighs> not true. Not true because if you're looking at the calendar, you will see that coming up, the very beginning of next week is our draft workshop. So during this week, you need to develop a draft that you can submit because the only thing you have to submit to on time every time is the draft workshop. So by the close of this coming weekend, you need a complete draft of paper number one that you can share so that other people can comment on it and then you can get an idea of how to improve it before the final draft. So you are writing a paper this week. How do you write this paper? Well, let me tell you something. You're using the readings from Gawande and Lori Moore, the short story, People Like Us Are the Only People Here, to craft your own health narrative. And one of the things that helps me when I have a writing project is <clears throat> to see how other people solve this problem. 
How do you solve the problem of using a personal narrative to tell a larger story about health? And what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to do my version of the paper, share that with you as a way for you to be like, oh, this is what a solution to this problem could look like. You will have that before the draft workshop. So as you're crafting your draft, you will have a version of the paper to be like, oh, okay, so this is what it's supposed to look like. Once you do the draft workshop, you will be able to see three more people's solution to the problem. So you'll be able to get even more ideas about how you can improve your own. And <clears throat> right now, I'm at the stage where I know what I'm writing my paper about. I know the story I'm gonna use. I know the text I'm gonna use. I have to sit down to write. Woo, sitting down to write is so scary. And so what I often do when I'm not in a position to sit down to write is I imagine myself writing an email to a friend where I kind of complain about this paper that I have to write. And usually in the process of writing that email, <clears throat> which I often don't send, I realize that I have a lot more ideas than I thought. And so I'm gonna record another video later this week and post in the file section my version of the paper. But what I wanna make sure that you're doing right now is thinking about the readings from Akul Gawande and Lori Moore and how they use personal stories, either their own personal story or stories from other people that they talk to, to make an argument about health. And think to yourself, what's a story I could tell that could give evidence that could be uh, a fable for something that I believe about health. It's, it's kind of fun. And one of the reasons that I'm doing the model paper and I'm not showing you model papers from other students is that these can be extremely personal. And of course, you will be submitting them to a draft workshop, so they will be read by your fellow students. Within this community, it's not anybody's business what people write, right? These aren't stories for outside of our community. These are stories for us to share because we are supporting each other in becoming better writers. We are supporting each other in becoming more sophisticated thinkers about what it means to be healthy, what it means as a society to take care of each other. And for us to do that, we have to be willing to hold each other up and know that any comments that people might have on us as writers are not comments on us as people. Because you know what I think of you all as people? You're all great people, all A plus people. Does that mean that everybody is gonna get an A plus on their paper? Probably not, probably not. And when you give somebody something else to read, you want them to give you the kind of feedback that will allow you to improve it before it gets to me, which means that you will be critical, right? And if you trust them to be critical, you trust yourself to be critical with them, what we need to remember as a community is that we're all here to succeed. We're all here to lift each other up. We're all rooting for each other. And so I would love to see more commentary in the discussion forums on each other's writing. And I just want you to remember as you share things in discussion, as you share things in this paper, that everyone here wants you to succeed. Have a great Monday.